now we have uh, now we have uh, Andre. Okay, so that seems to be the first yes. case. Yes, hello. Yeah, so welcome. We can hear you very well. Uh, so welcome here in uh, New York. Uh, after having had uh, a few uh, lectures on, on data and so on, I think it's refreshing to see a real patient on the table and the team working on it. So uh, we are excited to see your case. Yes, hello. So uh, we can hear you also very well. and. Um, uh, hello to everybody and thanks for letting us participate here uh, with our cases. With me is uh, Sven Bräunlich from our department and I guess we can right away start and maybe Sven you can introduce the case. Yes, sure. Good morning also uh, from my side. Uh, next slide, we have a 61-year-old year, uh, gentleman. He has claudication on the right side. He has hardly any symptoms on the left side. Uh, ABI uh, on the right side is 0.42. Uh, on the left side also reduced 0.56. Risk factors, arterial hypertension, uh, smoking, coronary artery disease. He had already some work on his peripheral arteries, uh, stent implantation on the right iliac artery in 2014. This is his uh, angiography. Uh, you can see he has an occlusion of the left iliac arteries, but this is not our target today because, as I said, he has no symptoms on the le almost no symptoms on the left side, but he has a uh, long occlusion of the SFA on the right side. Uh, next slide, and this is uh, our strategy because of the occlusion on the left iliac, so we want to do an anticrate recanalization here coming from the right uh, femoral uh, excess uh, and an anticrate uh, guide wire passage. Of course, we are also prepared to do a retrograde puncture in case of failure and after predilatation truck coated balloon or, if necessary, truck eluting stent treatment uh, is planned. Yeah. yeah, fine. Thank you very much. So maybe we can switch to the angular screen. And uh, yeah, we have punctured, of course, already. And uh, here you can see the undergrade puncture uh, seems to be a little bit close to the bifurcation. Um, nevertheless, I think we have uh, enough place here to work safely on the SFA. Uh, I cannot really see a lot of calcium in the proximal part, but typically distal than some calcium. And um, here, different, different to the previous angle, it seems to reach further down this occlusion. However, with uh, some stronger injection, you still can see this uh, remaining channel from the, uh, the P1 segment going upwards. So outflow is okay. Uh, so, in fact, this would be a typical case for us to, I mean, primarily maybe think of drug coated balloons, even if it's a long, even although it's a long lesion, potentially need some stabilization at that areas where we have uh, this calcium. So at the end, in fact, we would um, decide after uh, predilation uh, what to do, whether we need stenting directly or, or drug coated balloon. Yeah, so we are ready to start. We have loaded um, a V18 control into a balloon, 420. In fact, we measured here in this case the diameter of the SFA because these arteries look very small. And we really found a five millimeter diameter SFA artery here at that, cas at that uh, occlusion. Um, so it, it seems to be quite small, yeah. So we start here with a 420 um, balloon to go down. And um, shall I give you a roadmap or maybe yeah, a roadmap? Yeah, a roadmap is a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, there's so some stump here, but then the occlusion starts. Just a moment. Uh, I think now we can take the roadmap out. Huh? Uh, <laughs> shall I? Yeah, I think, uh, well, with the stump proximal and that narrow part distal, so I'm not long sheet, I think it's, um, it's maybe not a bad yeah, approach to try here in 018 first. Otherwise, in long total occlusions, we would right away go with, uh, down with an 035 glide wire. 
here maybe shall I just push the balloon yeah. to hook somewhere into the plug uh, without wire Sunny? like this oh, probably also goes the wrong direction no? okay uh, patient feels this so let's take an angled catheter just yeah. sphere French yeah. yeah or take another angle into the wire yeah Just a moment. Yeah, any uh, other approach you would choose, or? Well, I think uh, we can discuss here. Uh, I mean, clearly you're trying to cross uh, in the uh, true lumen here with an O18 approach. Is that, uh, let's say, in the context of uh, trying to use, uh, yeah. PCB yeah. technology, uh, is that something everybody would do? When would you switch to, to maybe a more robust uh, O35 uh, crossing, Bill? Yeah, I, I, um, okay. I, this is a pretty good strategy. I think it's uh, reasonable to try to get through the, to through the total in the true lumen, but uh, you know, if you got through most of it and, and we're subintimal in a portion of it, we enter quickly like it looks like he's probably going to do here. That still wouldn't prohibit uh, DCB usage. And we've seen plenty of right. successful outcomes See? that way. Yeah. So, Andre, distally, we've seen the refilling of this of the segment uh, also uh, above the incoming collateral. Uh, so, any precautions you take not to not to dissect beyond the collateral? I mean, I know that uh, many times you're also considering retrograde approaches in in, in this scenario. Yeah, absolutely. So we are clearly here prepared to go retrograde once we have the impression that we dissect here across that area, and that's currently, in fact, the case. So I, I really wouldn't uh, try here now to, I mean, dissect further down to that area, or would try to avoid this, where the artery is um, more uh, uh, wider. Uh, so because I think clearly, if I and that may mean that we have to stand down to P1, uh, which uh, I clearly would like to avoid having drug-coated balloons available. So therefore, I'm going to balloon down to that area here. And uh, potentially now we take um, a CTO wire. Let's take the uh, Victory 30 gram to maybe be able to just poke back here into that that area. So this ballooning is meant yeah, to but, uh, potentially disrupt the membrane a little bit and find an entry hole into the true lumen. Yeah, exactly. So also, I mean, if this uh, wire uh, with a straight balloon doesn't work here, the CTO wire, the next step of escalation could be to uh, take an angled catheter down, Judkins, for example, and for that, uh, predilation is uh, extremely helpful. I actually, so, I actually use first the, the no. angled catheter and straight wire as my initial uh, combination because I find that the wire will, the curved wires will seek um, oh, yeah. subintimal space wow. sometimes or, or knuckle up pretty quickly. So the angle yeah. gives the angled catheter gives you that ability to steer while you have a straight wire, hopefully seeking the so do you center cut, lumen. Do you cut the tip then off? I do. I, I take I, I bevel it. Yeah. I cut the I cut it so that helps in calcium. I can screw it in and get through the uh, severe uh, tortuosity or the severe calcification quite easily just by spinning the catheter. So I do modify the catheter. So are you using any of the reentry devices at all? Um, yeah, only when needed. Yeah, yeah. but the, I don't. But I mean, I, I think they still provide. Them. There's still a a use for them. I think yeah. the outback and so on. I think yeah. is still can be useful uh, once you've. Uh, exhausted these other techniques. Yeah. But the key is to not dissect further than you need to, you know, into, the, into the healthy vessel. Okay. So you make a little, very little bend on the CTO wire here? Yeah, very, yes, yes, exactly. Very little. If it's too big, wires very easily destroyed. First wire somehow was destroyed already before we took it out. So uh, we have to be very cautious with these wires. And I usually directly go to, yeah, to 30 gram, skip the ones with less weight tip. And of course, this could also be done differently. Yeah, let's see. But yeah, what you just did was very important that you uh, pulled back your catheter 
Otherwise, uh, the tip of the guide wire would have moved directly into the subintimal space. So if, if your intention of pre-dilatation is to disrupt the membrane, you need to pull back the catheter a And this was done exactly here. Mm -hmm. I think more success is, is gotten in CTOs by retreating than advancing. Yeah. I agree. Oh, there was uh, another one. That's probably not quite so. Okay, so usually we do not spend too much time for this here and rather go directly retrograde. I think this really helps to save time, radiation, it's because this, no, it's still subintimal. Yeah, and I mean, the more I try, uh, the higher the risk that I destroy that area here. So therefore, I think we're gonna go retrograde now. It's a little far down, but I think the nine centimeter long needle should still reach that area. Um, I feel the, my, uh, yeah, the femur head here, and right above the medial femur head, gives a ganz kleinen Betäubungspeak here, nicht erschrecken. I give some local anesthesia. And now V18. Nine centimeter. Mm. Nine centimeter, one twenty G nadel. Can you see it? Here, here, here. For this area, you need a nine centimeter long needle. So, Andre, I think the problem is here. I'm not sure if he can really stay with you here because we are left with an almost yeah. an undoable schedule here. We, uh, uh, PK is in the other room and wants to f uh, do his case, and we have two more talks and need to finish in 15 minutes. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. it's almost not possible. Uh, I think we will see details of this retrograde uh, uh, stitch uh, also in the so technical forum it. later today. Um, Maybe you can record for us uh, a little bit of the crossing, and then we want to come back uh, sure. somewhat later to see more. Yeah. Uh, so I would suggest uh, we switch to PK and. So, Andre, we are back with you. Yes. Yeah, we are pretty far with the case, but not yet done. Just a moment. So we, we, we punctured here retrograde, which was not so easy because um, this uh, distal portion collapsed. Uh, so actually we couldn't see really anything, just punctured to the wire. That's actually also something which uh, very easily can occur if you take a re-entry device in there, that the rest of the lumen uh, collapses. But nevertheless, with a little bit of feeling yeah, here, we thought we saw the SFA. Uh, we took the needle here into that area. Uh, wire, however, didn't go in, so we had to go lateral to see. And obviously, the wire was too far through the artery, so we pulled it back a little bit, gently, gently, and then we took here the wire up to the SFA. And that went very nicely here uh, into the SFA here, to, into the predilated SFA here, potentially into, into a collateral. So, therefore, yeah, we predilated proximal once again, take a Judkins right down to, um, sorry, uh, to snare the wire here, which was also not so difficult. And then uh, took a balloon down. And for hemostasis, first we took the balloon out of the artery, blocking that hole. Uh, the uh, support catheter was out from the distal area already, and then we slightly pulled back the balloon so that the wire could go downwards like this here. Yeah, now we predilated already with a five millimeter balloon, and um, uh, we uh, see what we have a little bit expected, that proximal where the well, where it was not so calcified, it looks okay, although relatively collapsed, I must say. Mm. So maybe also there we take stents in. It was done with a five millimeter balloon now. Uh, patient complained, so I don't think it was an undersized balloon. But clearly here in the mid portion where we see this calcium, we have some quite uh, significant dissections, I would say. 
So I think we, we stick to our plan that we take the stents down across that dissections, also proximal where we have this recoil, but distal uh, where there was still a slight channel open. We will treat this with a Ranger drug coated balloon, so avoiding taking stents down to the P1 segment. Huh? Yeah. I think that sounds like a good plan. Any comments, Bill? No, I agree. I think Andre's done a nice job so far. Particularly also leaving the P1 segment without any implant is, uh, is certainly a good idea because that's the area where we first of all have seen issues with stand durabilities uh, due to the mechanical forces and secondarily also it's rarely done nowadays anymore. P1 bypass might also yeah. like uh, to use this as a landing zone. So yeah. Anyhow, our surgical colleagues always feel better if we don't put <laughs> metals in that. Yeah. I think yeah. since yeah. the segment has not been Absolutely. occluded just to nose, I think it's, it's, it's good to use DCB what? only there. The road map Especially when the disease doesn't take you into the P1. I'm a minus yeah. It's a re-entry issue and you can avoid stenting the P1, I agree. Sometimes the disease takes you, you don't have a choice. So Andre, you're using here the Illuvier yeah. stand. Um, we heard it's a purposely built uh, stand for, for the SFA. And, how do you size it and what size is that actually here? Yeah, so this is one millimeter oversized, so we predated with a five millimeter. This is a six, um, so one millimeter oversizing we do. Noch so ein 600. Da haben wir schon hier. Ja. So we will stand up to the bifurcation now. However, maybe first we take the Ranger distal because at the end with a very close puncture to the femoral bifurcation, we may have problems to get back in, uh, in a stable position to, to balloon there. Yeah, so we will continue with drug balloon distal and then take stents up That's and fine. yeah, not sure. We, maybe we can show you the, the result later or? Yeah, I think it m might be a good idea here because we are really late in our program and uh, so I think uh, if you can show us maybe uh, the result at the beginning of the next case in the next session, that might be the best solution. Yeah. Okay, Andre, thanks Perfect. very much for showing us this very challenging case, difficult crossing, and uh, here the differential use of uh, different drug looting technologies. Um, we have two more talks, but I guess it is probably wise to go yeah, for Yeah, maybe we have the chance to just quickly show the result of the last case. Um, just a moment. Yeah, okay. So, Svenny, if you show the case. So, this is here after taking Eluvia stents in, actually, three Eluvias, uh, 600, 600, and uh, 660, uh, right to the femoral bifurcation. And uh, maybe next picture. Here's the treatment distal after drug coated balloon, two drug coated balloons. There was also popliteal stenosis. <coughs> so I think it's um, right what we wanted. Looks very nice. And yeah, we are happy with this case. Closed with ProGlide. Outflow is very good. Nice. Okay. Challenging case. Yeah, just wanted to show you this. Yeah.